Hello, in this presentation, we will compare QuickBooks Online versus QuickBooks Desktop. Hello, in this presentation, we will pay payroll taxes within QuickBooks Online. We will have a comprehensive QuickBooks Online course soon, if not available yet. We also have a comprehensive Excel course, which complements the QuickBooks courses and a QuickBooks Pro desktop version course you can find at the link below. Here we are in the QuickBooks Online dashboard. We will be continuing with the Get Great Guitars problem. We're going to be talking about payroll taxes and paying the payroll taxes. In order to get an understanding of that, what the payroll taxes are, let's first take a look at the reports on the left side. We're going to select the Balance Sheet Report, the Balance Sheet Report. We're going to run this report for the month of, or the two months of, uh, January through February 2021, so 01, 01, 21, 20, 02, 28, 21. So January 1st, 2021 to February 28th, 2021, and run that report. We're going to scroll down through the report and look for the payroll liabilities within the liabilities section. Here we have the payroll liabilities. Now there's going to be a lot of options in order to process the payroll so and the payroll will change depending on location but the concept of the payroll will remain the same so we're going to go through the concept and then record the transactions here the payroll could be set up within quickbooks and quickbooks has different tiers of how, mu how much operations will be done through the quickbooks system and how much operations should be done uh, will have to be done manually and or there's a lot of payroll options that you could have outside of QuickBooks companies that specialize in payroll and could help you automate uh, that process. We're going to go through here as if an outside company has worked through the payroll and it still means that uh, it's not just we can just have them do the payroll and that's it because we still have to enter that information into our system. So no matter what happens and even if we use an external payroll system Oftentimes the bookkeeper even needs to know a little bit more than possibly if we were to run the payroll inside because we would need to then know how to record the journal entry and how to get that information into our books so it's on our financial statements. So there's different ways we can run this. What we did when we generated this payroll, if we select this payroll liability item, we see these checks here for uh, these individuals, Erica and Adam. And if we select those checks, those payroll checks, then we see that this was for Adam and we had the uh, payroll expense amount, the amount of the check being $3,539.33. But of course, that's the amount that they got net of what was taken from them in terms of payroll taxes. They actually earned $4,583.33. And then we took out the payroll taxes of $1,044. And uh, then we have the, the payroll expense and uh, the payroll liability here being our side the employer side so let's take a look at the worksheet we had and this would be similar to a worksheet that we would get from a third party or one that we could generate within the system to tell us what's going on per employee this gets really complicated complicated very quickly because if we have one employee or two employees we can track this fairly easily but once we get a lot of employees this stuff starts to accumulate and uh, just the no, the amount of information and the types of calculations we have to do starts to get pretty tedious. And if we have multiple states, then it gets more uh, complex as well because, of course, the regulations will change. We're showing here just the information for two employees, Adam and Erica. And we're, this is a report that we would see like similar to a report that we might get from a third party or a report that we could generate from QuickBooks. And it gives us an idea of where this information came from. Where did these numbers get there from? in terms of the payable well we owed um, adam here if we had adam we had the social security that we took out he earned four thousand five eighty three thirty three we took from him social security which is kind of a flat rate typically uh it's one of the federal programs and then we took from him another four thousand five eighty three for medicare another kind of flat rate typically generally type of uh tax and then we have the income tax which has a progressive tax rate a bit more complex to calculate uh and we took that out that is remaining that gave him the check that we just saw of three thousand five thirty nine thirty three so that amount here is this number minus this 
minus this, minus this. Then we had to pay our portion of Social Security. We kind of match the Social Security. Another 258, which is coming out of our uh, account for the payroll taxes on the net income of the employee. And the same is true for Medicare. So we have our Medicare that we pretty much just match the Medicare for the employee uh, side of things. And then Erica, we had the same thing, earned 800. We took Social Security 49 away and another 11 for Medicare, leaving 800 minus the 49 and the 11 and then 110 for the income tax for a check of 630. Then we match the Social Security and Medicare. So what happened then is that we paid a check total for these two people of this 4,169. Two checks went out for that amount in total. And then we took from them these in taxes. These came from them in taxes. And then these amounts are going to be taxes that we uh, took out for our, our side. Those are our payroll taxes. So now what we need to do is pay those payroll taxes. This happened in January. And when do we pay payroll taxes? It's going to depend again on the system. If we, it's where we are and how much, how much payroll taxes we have. Uh, we could be paying monthly. We could be paying uh, bi-weekly. It uh, just depends. Or we could be paying quarterly. Uh, depends on, on different circumstances in terms of location and how much the payroll tax is. What we're going to do here is uh, say that we're going to pay monthly, meaning... Uh, the payroll was generated in the month of January, and we're going to pay the month of January in payroll at the end of February. So it's the end of February now. We're paying the payroll taxes that were collected for January, which includes Social Security, Medicare, uh, income tax, FICA, uh, federal income tax, and the Social Security and Medicare that we then collected for, for uh, our employer portion. So those are the checks that we're going to write. Now, it, to, to add those up, we're going to put this in a couple, uh, a couple checks. It's all going to the federal government. These are all federal taxes. If we had state taxes, we'd have to pay those as well. But we're going to break them up into their components, the tax types, which is going to be Social Security, Medicare, and uh, the federal income tax. So we'll actually write three checks. Uh, again, that will kind of depend on, on where you're at and where, how they're going to, how they're going to group that's how you got to make the payments. Oftentimes you have to make them electronic payments, but we're going to process uh, the checks here in, in that format to write the checks for it. So these two are going to be grouped together. We're going to say Social Security and Social Security over here. Those are going to the same agency, even though one was paid for from the employee, one from the employer. That adds up to, if we look at the sum down here, uh, 614. So that's what we're going to write a check for, for the 614. And we're going to write that just to the IRS. And then we're going to write another check for this and this, the Medicare, two portions, 154. And then the income tax, there's only the employee side, that's going to be 830. So we'll process those. So if we were to do that over here, we're going to close this back out. We're back in QuickBooks over here. We're going to go to now if we had this taxes set up we would go to the payroll tax center and if we have everything kind of set up for us it would basically say hey you have payroll taxes due uh, of this amount as of january and it would calculate the same way that we basically looked at and uh, then we would go through the process and basically tell it to process a check as long as we had it said uh, whatever the processing dates were correct saying meaning uh, make sure to, to write the checks for monthly so everything that was collected in in january we want to write the check in february and then it would go through and process that information for us we're going to enter this check and we're just going to write the check and that'll decrease the payable amount uh, so we're just going to go to the plus icon up here and we're going to say here's a check and we're going to write the check and i'm just going to say it's going to go to the irs for the internal revenue service and we'll save, it's gonna be a new vendor. So we're gonna say that's a new vendor and we'll save that. And we'll tab through here. And we're gonna say that the date of the check is going to be, oh, oh let's see. We're gonna say that the date is 022821. Let's try that one more time, 022821. So that's the end of the February that we're making the check, but we're paying off the uh, accumulation of payroll taxes for the end of January. We're not going to write the check. We're going to keep the check number there. 
And then the account that we're going to write it to is going to be payroll tax liabilities. So it's going to be a liability account, payroll tax liability. So make sure to pick up the liability and not the expense. It should be decreasing the liability. It should have a small I there, but that's okay. We're going to put the description. Probably be good to put, you know, paying off the month of January. I'm not going to put it here. Probably should though. We're going to pay three of these. I'm going to pay the uh, 830 first. Let's do that. We'll say uh, January. And this is going to be for the federal income tax, just to have a memo here. And it's not going to be taxable and billable to anybody, so we're not going to have a customer on it. We're going to click on the other line to make sure that it does record. And once we record this, then it'll decrease the checking account and it'll decrease the payable account. So we'll say save and new. And we'll do this again. So that was for the FIT. Now we got to do it for the for the Medicare and we have to do it for the uh, Social Security portion. It's all going to the IRS, but they're for three different components. So we're going to do the, the next component, which will be the uh, Internal Revenue Service again. Checking account. And it's going to be for the same date. Check number, correct. And we're going to pay now, not it's still January, but not the FIT. We're going to say this is for Medicare now. So it's Medicare, and it's notice it's memorizing what we're doing, which is great, but uh, we still have some minor changes here. So it's going to be for the 154. And if we click on the next line, there we have it. It's going to decrease the checking account by 154. And the other side is going to decrease the payroll liability. And we'll save and new on that. And we'll do one more of these for the Social Security portion. Also going to the IRS, but it's going to separate funds. And we know they're going to make sure that they keep this separate and manage it all properly. So it's going to go to the IRS once again for the check-in. Once again, the date of 22821, the number 1019, and payroll liability. Now it's January, but it's not for Medicare. It's for... Social Security, and we're going to say that that was for 614. These are these are the amounts that are being generated, by the way, <laughs> from our worksheet. So the Social Security is this plus this, the employer and employee portion, adding up to the 614. The Medicare is this plus this, adding up to the 154, and the income tax is just being pulled out from the employee at the, the 830. So that's going to be that amount, and we're just going to say uh, save and new there. So we'll take a look at the financial statements here, and just before we do that, just note that uh, what we have done is record payroll, collect the payroll taxes, and then pay the payroll taxes, and then of course we're going to have to report the payroll taxes, and that's going to be on the form 941 for you know, federal income taxes for the U.S. So then. And this is, you know, typical tax standards no matter where we're at. So if we go to now, now if we go to the 941, what this is doing is saying, hey, did you actually pay the taxes that uh, we think you were going to owe? Would you resum these things up and recalculate what the tax liability is on a court on a monthly basis in this case or a quarterly basis? Sorry, in this case. And uh, so at the end of each quarter, we'll add this stuff up. And this again will add up the the three types of taxes for the federal tax. FIT, Federal Income Tax, Social Security, and Medicare, and uh, and it'll have the employer employee portion, and it'll basically say, hey, you know, at the bottom of this, it'll say, here's how much that uh, you you um, owe versus how much you paid, and hopefully it should match because we're we're trying to do this very specifically, and you want to do it very specifically. We don't, we don't want to mess up the payroll because that causes problems. <laughs> So it, hopefully it should match up and we have no difference. If there is a difference, then we pay the amount due. So this is just the amount of the form that's going to help us to report this. And again, it depends on how we're going to re record this form. Uh, it depends on what we pay in terms of QuickBooks on how much they'll automate that process to generate this form automatically with us. And if we have a third-party payroll company doing this for us, they'll hopefully should report and help us generate uh, this form on a quarterly basis or whenever our payroll tax forms are due. All right, back to QuickBooks. We're going to go to the reports and check out what happened here and see if it does what we believe it should be doing. We're going to go to the reports on the left side, balance sheet. Let's take a look at the balance sheet. 
and then change those dates once again to 01012122022821 and January 1st, 2021 to February 28th, 2021 and run that report. So here is the report. If we take a look at the checking account, we should see our three checks that we have written. So if we scroll down, written, we see the three checks here that we written. And if we scroll back over, we have the 830 for the FIT, federal income tax, the 154, all going to the IRS, to the Medicare, and then the 600, and I'm sorry, that was, yeah, Medicare, <laughs> that's why. And then the 614 for Social Security. And if we click on any of these, we'll see the actual check. Now, that's how the process is going to be. I'm going to scroll back up. We're going to go back to the report summary. And we'll go to the payroll tax liability, which is now zero because we paid it off. And we haven't run any payroll for February yet. So we ran payroll in January and then we haven't run it for February yet. So all we owed was what was collected in January. And now we paid off January's payroll and we're going to uh, run payroll taxes. And now we're going to run payroll in February shortly. So if we click on this, then we see those, the payroll taxes accumulating and then, of course, being paid with our three checks here. Now this is going to be the process no matter how we do it, whether we do it internally or whether we have a, uh, someone else uh, record it or helping us out with that. Uh, QuickBooks does help us to, to summarize that reporting and uh, make sure that uh, we group the checks properly and all that, uh, depending on the different types of payroll processes that we use. The more complex payroll gets, meaning the more employees we have and or the more states that we are working in, then um, the, the more likely it might be to, to get some more uh, outside help with, uh, with the payroll as well. But no matter what the process is this, is, this is the essence of what will happen. And that same concept of us basically withholding and then paying is, is going to be applicable for many different things that we could implement in the payroll, such as retirement plans, 401k plans, uh, insurance type plans, if we have to pay union dues, if there's garnishments, all the same thing. We're just going to basically say, hey, here's your check. You would have gotten $100, but we had to garnish you or or want something good. Pay pay your withholding or your or your um, Medicare or whatnot, or your medical bill, your insurance for you. And we took that out. So you only get you know $70 and we're going to pay the difference for you to these other areas that are owed for you. And those go into a liability. And then we pay them off with a check to whoever the check should go to. In this case, the IRS, but it could just as well be going to whoever, you know, if we we're paying the 401k plan, it's going to go into some type of investment account and whatnot. So that's going to be the payroll uh, taxes being paid. Hello. In this presentation, we will pay payroll taxes, including FIT, federal income tax, and FICA, Social Security, and Medicare within QuickBooks Pro 2018. If you have been working along with us, we will be continuing with the Get Great Guitars problem. If not, that is okay. We will be paying the payroll taxes and you can go through the process of that paying payroll taxes process with the pay the liabilities function within QuickBooks at this time. If you have the backup file and would like to restore to this point in time, you can go to the file tab, restore QuickBooks, and that will take you to this data set so that we have the same information hopefully the same amount of payroll liabilities to be paying as we work through the example if not then we can just look at this for an example of that we currently have the open windows open here so in order to have that open if you do not at this time you want to go to view and open windows list we also have the only open window that's the home tab and so we're going to Go to and make sure you have that open by going to company and home tab. That's where we are. We will be, of course, down here in the employee section working with the payroll. Our goal now not to process the payroll, but to pay the payroll taxes. In order to do this, we'll give a quick recap of what we have so far in terms of what is payroll. How does it process? What are payroll taxes? How are we going to pay them? Who are they going to be paid to? So within payroll, there's a lot of options within payroll. QuickBooks itself has at least three tiers of payroll options and uh, has another option, which is basically the free manual version of payroll option. 
those three tiers typically will differ in terms of the types of reports and the number of processing in terms of uh, forms that will be processed including the state forms and the uh, federal forms at the year end and quarterly how much they will be populated from the state forms often being the more difficult forms because they're going to differ from state to state if we're talking u.s federal forms usually pretty easier it's they're still not the easiest thing to process but they're easier than some other forms because of course they will be standardized throughout the entire um, area and so you can they'll be standardized the state forms uh, typically could cost more if you use the manual process then you'll have to actually calculate the withholdings as you enter the payroll within the payroll processing system here so that's going to be the, the concept the other option of course we have is to use a third party such as like ADP or paychecks to process the payroll for us outside of the QuickBooks system and then we'd have to link that into the QuickBooks system in some way with a journal entry of some kind so that we're recording the proper expenses related to payroll in our system no matter what tier of the payroll system we have set up your employee system within the home tab should look something like this we'll have an enter time we'll have a pay employees and we will have the pay liabilities the pay employees is what we've looked at in a prior time period that's what we do when we process the paycheck when we're actually printing the paychecks or entering the data for a pay period that has entered including hours that the employees have worked generating the paychecks that's those paychecks being calculated as their gross pay minus what was taken from them not for our purposes but to then be paid for them in part to uh, whatever the state and the local that including for the u.s the federal income tax and uh, fica which is social security and medicare now of course we're going to pay those so in order to look at the payroll process we have this nice little icon and we could just click this icon and and pay the payroll that is due but in order for us to get a better understanding of this, let's take a look at the forms and uh, what we have so far. When we generate this pay employees, we will be withholding some from our employees for FIT uh, and uh, FICA, Social Security and Medicare. And we'll have to pay our portion of Social Security and Medicare and whatever other payroll taxes that uh, are we are responsible for too as well. So it's including federal on FUTA, federal unemployment tax. So anyways, we're going to go to reports up top. We're going to go to company and financial. And then we'll go down to the balance sheet. We will then change the date ranges in the customer reports section. Clicking the customer reports section and changing the date range from 010121. We will be working this in the future. To 123121. We're going to look at the entire year that we will... Uh, be working in and okay although there's only one date up here that'll allow us to drill down on the date ranges and see the detail within the date ranges what we're looking for is the liability accounts us owing the state and, the, and for the taxes in terms of payroll taxes here they are here so we have the payroll taxes of 1598 if we double click on the payroll taxes we then have the items here in terms of the payroll taxes. They are generated from the paychecks that we have been generating. And you'll note they're broken out by type of payroll tax. So we have in this uh, payroll taxes, we've got the 740, 720, which looks like federal income tax that we withheld from Adams here, the employee. And then we've got the 258, which looks like Social Security we withheld. And then another 258 which looks like the social security that we have to pay our portion as the employer. And then we have the 66, which looks like the Adams, uh, again, the amount that we withheld for Medicare. And then another 66, which looks like the amount that we have to then pay in terms of the employer for Medicare. Note, we're, this is a simplified problem. We're only dealing with federal income tax. We're not dealing with FUTA here, and we're not dealing with any state uh, income taxes. And so that's what we will be paying when we pay this process we got the two employees same process for the other employee federal income tax we've got the uh, the uh, medicare for the employee the medicare for the employer oh sorry this is social security for the employee social security for the employer medicare for the employee medicare for the employer for our second employee if we were to double click on any of those 
we can see more detail within here. And if we want to see more detail within this check, this is really the, the net check. These are the net taxes that were taken out of the check. If we want to see the detail of that amount, we can go to the paycheck here and we see this item. This is the, this is the earnings. This is not showing, of course, on the payroll tax ledger or transaction detail we were looking at. What was, was the 720 federal income tax, FIT, Social Security we took from the employee in order to pay the government, the Medicare we took from the employee in order to pay the government, thereby giving the employee this amount, even though they earned that amount. These three amounts, those that we are including as a liability, they're not ours, we didn't take them for ourselves. We're going to have to put them in a liability and pay them to the federal government, as is our obligation. Then we have our portion, Social Security and Medicare, our employer taxes paid and calculated based on employee earnings, similar to a matching type of situation. So we're going to close that out. We're going to close this out. We're going to close this out. In essence, we are going to be paying this amount that is due. Now, when we set up the payroll, that when it when do we have to pay that? It could be it could differ depending on our circumstances. We might have to pay it the month after the payroll has been processed. We might have to pay it weekly or after the payroll dates. If we process the payroll bi-weekly, we might have to pay it by the next week. Just depends on on usually the size of the payroll that we have in terms of what the government agency we're dealing with will permit in terms of when you have to pay these particular payroll taxes once those are set up in the system then it's pretty easy to use the payroll process to to pay the payroll in order to set those in the system we have to make sure that payroll is turned on first and in order to do that you, you have to pick one of the payroll processes we're using the manual system here we showed how to set up the manual payroll process in a prior presentation if you go to lists up top and then if we go down to the payroll item list, we'll see some items related directly to the payroll. So we have our hourly pay, our salary pay, advanced earnings, federal unemployment, federal withholding, Medicare, uh, Medicare employee, Social Security, Social Security employee, and uh, Medicare employee aid. And we, we of course will have to populate those percentages. Now, if you're in the if you're in the U.S. and we're doing the Medicare Social Security, this will basically be uh, populated for us. Where it gets tricky is when we get to the uh, state taxes and those things that will differ from state to state. We'll have to make sure that we have the right percentages in these items. So then we'll go to the Home tab. And instead of just writing a check and saying we, we're going to write a check, we have a liability. It's already tracking the reliability. Instead of just writing a check then, we want to go through the pay liabilities and, the li and what this will do is it'll help QuickBooks to tie everything together. It'll help QuickBooks to generate reports that are all within the pay well, payroll process. And it'll help us to just to uh, track the process and let QuickBooks do more of these calculations for us. So what we are going to do instead of just writing the check is say pay liabilities. And then we're going to select the date ranges that we're going to pay the liabilities for. In our example, we're going to say we're going to pay it for the time period of 01012121 uh, We're working in the future for the first month. So we're imagining it's in February and we are paying off the month of January in the year of 2021. So we're going to say OK. And then we have these items. So if we go through this. First, to print checks, we're not going to print checks in this example. If we were to print the checks, then of course we would leave that on. We would have our printed checks that are pre-set up and then we would have to put those into the printer and print them. If we tab through these items, so I'm going to uncheck the print checks. We tab through these items, it's going to be printed from our checking account. If we have another account, a payroll account, then we, we want to make sure that we have the proper account in terms of the cash being removed from the proper account. Review liability check to enter expense penalties. We're going to keep that as the default. And the date for us is going to be 02-28-21. Uh, February 28th. That's when we're going to write the check. But remember the dates that we're running the payroll are January 1st through show payroll liabilities. January 1st through 01-01. I'm sorry, 01 31 to 1. 
So those are going to be the liabilities we're paying. So we're paying the liabilities as of the end of January. We are paying them in uh, the end of February. This again is something that you're going to make sure you want to set up and have the proper payroll time period set up in accordance with whatever regulations we are dealing with. But the, the point being that we're going to write this date, of course, the date that the check that we're going to write. And we're going to have these dates being the range in which we're going to be dealing with the payroll. So everything that happened in January is the range we're dealing with here. Then we can check all that applies. So we're going to say payroll item has no liability. So, okay. Oh, actually, we don't need, I'm not going to have the federal unemployment. So I'm not going to check that one. So they're saying that no vendor has been set up. We don't have any liability for it. And uh, so we're not going to be using that. Payroll item has no agency. So if that's the case, we're going to have to set up the agency that we are going to be paying the federal withholdings to. So we will set up the vendor. I'm going to say yes. We're going to say enter name for the federal withholding tax payroll item. We will keep it at the federal withholdings. This is going to be a federal withholding. Payroll item is an active no. So we're going to say next. Uh, enter name of agency which liability is paid. If we look at the agencies, these are basically just the vendors that we have here. Now these are going to be federal, so I'm going to say internal revenue service. The internal revenue service. And then we will say next. It's saying we haven't set this up. Do we want to set it up? We're going to go yes. We're going to set this up. I'm going to set it up as the quick setup rather than uh, the setup, the long setup, which is where we would put the address and everything else related to it. We're going to set the quick setup and next and select the items that will increase wages for calculating federal income tax withholding. I'm going to keep this as the default on both of those, the salary and hourly being the only two payroll items we currently have set up and finish that process. So there we have that. I'm going to check off the Medicare, do the same thing that we're going to set up and say, yes, that is going to be Medicare. And we're going to keep those two. We're going to say next. And then it's going to also go to the Internal Revenue Service. So it's picking that for us now. The, these accounts are correct. Liability account, liability account, correct. We're going to say next. Payroll expense, correct. Next. And we have the rate 0.045. That's it. So we're going to say next. For both the salary and uh, the two items we have set up, that is it. And finished. So we're going to check off that item. Once we have the items set up, we're going to go ahead and create the checks here. Now note that, so we have everything checked off. We're going to go ahead and create the checks. If we wanted to double check this note, we could run the nice little payroll liabilities report here. This is a report that could be found in the reports. And if we went to employee and payroll as well. But if we take a look at that report real quick, we can see our, our liability report as of 01, uh, 01 21 january 1st 2021 to january 31st 2021 and here is our data so that's could be useful to run that so here we have that that's going to be what we have so we're going to say create so we will create this and it has then generated uh, the checks that need to be generated we're going to go ahead and close this and then if we take a look at what has happened we can go to the balance sheet at this time and scroll up to the top, looking in the checking account, double clicking the checking account, scrolling down. We see the checks that we have written. We wrote uh, the three checks here, put them in as separate checks. So there's the 830 uh, there that the payroll check has been generated. So when we go through this process, it will create an actual check. And we can also go to uh, close this out. If we go to the payroll liability, then if we scroll down, we have the payroll liability that is now zero. So if we if it's zero, then we're going to we could check this by going to the lists up top and going to the chart of accounts. And then we're looking at the liabilities. We want the payroll liability. There it is. It's at zero. If we want the detail, we can double click on that item and see the detail. If we want to look at the individual checks, we can check on an individual check and uh, see some of the detail for that. So if we close this back out, back to the Home tab, 
Uh, that's going to be the process for paying the liability. But once again, once it's set up, it's not too bad of a process. It does take a little bit of setting up. We did have to set up some vendors at this point even still that had not yet been set up for the payroll process. But once those had been set up next time, it would be much easier for us to pay that payroll liability and fairly easy for QuickBooks then to track that information. Uh, we just got to make sure that we have it all set up properly within uh, the uh, setup process when we put the payroll items together. Remember that when we did pay off this liability, note what happened is we paid off the liability, decreasing the liability, and decreasing the checking account. No effect on net income at this point in time, at the point in time we pay off the liabilities. The income statement was affected for both payroll taxes and the wages when we generated the paychecks at the time when we debited the or increased the expense for payroll tax expense and uh, payroll and as well as payroll uh, expenses itself decreasing the net income at that point here we're just paying off for something that has happened already in the past some something we have consumed labor that has been consumed in the past and we now owe it so we're paying off a liability with the cash here